Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're going to build a parametric staircase. This is an uh, example that I wanted to work on for a while. And uh, we are going to uh, build this from scratch. So we're going to start with an individual staircase and we're going to actually enable some customization with the stair height and a number of floors as well. So these are going to be added later on, but we can add uh, more stairs and we can also um, make it react to how we uh, add stairs as well. So let's uh, get right into it. Um, it's going to be pretty much regular floors or regular staircase per floor. Uh, but if you want it to be different or reactive to uh, different floor heights, then we need a more advanced version. Uh, but um, we will be able to get a chance of uh, looking into some of the technical aspects of building something like this. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to work on an individual staircase first, and we're going to start with two points. So let's say we construct two points and the initial value for the second point could be the height. So let's say our floors are three meters apart. Then I'm going to draw a line between these two floors. And let's start by defining the heights for the um, for the um, let's see for the steps. So if you divide length, I get the um, I get the axis for the staircase. Then with the divide length, I can actually do um, let's say 0.15, and we can get the location the height location of each individual point. Now the next thing we can do is actually uh, divide uh, or we can do split list. We can do a split list. So what I want to do is uh, we are actually building a U shape uh, staircase. So uh, in the middle um, of the um, of the points, the staircase has to twist back. So after getting the points, we need to get the midpoint. So this, we can do list length and look at the total number of points, 21. Let's divide it by two. And we can get the list and divide it into two groups. So if we can do one of these groups uh, fast, then we can actually copy the same logic to the other one. So these are the first steps of the first run. So I'm going to actually move these using a series. So my staircases are going to be actually locked into the X axis. So we can do series and um, let's define a step size here. So let's say our step size is 0.3. So that's going to be the step size for each successive number and depending on how many points we have so let's do list length we can get the total number of points corresponding uh, values and you can either deconstruct this or we can also move it as well so we can do unit x i want to move these points using the x translation vector along the x-axis and these are going to be now distributed like so so each of these um, are 30 centimeters and the height is uh, 0.15. Now, once we get these points located, the next step is to place an XY plane on each of these points. And you can see that my Y axis is aligned with the Y vector, X axis is aligned with the X vector. And we can use these planes located at each point to build boxes so we could do domain box so I can plug in to these planes the domain box now the Y is going up so the Y is going to be the width of the run uh, the X is going to be the depth of the sta staircase so we already have uh, the step size here for the steps so we can just construct a new domain and this would be the upper threshold for the steps, this would be starting from 0 to 0 0.3, and that will be the x value for the steps. I put it in the wrong place. So those are my steps. 
and for y, y is going to be from 0 to some negative value because um, y is going in the upper direction. So we can do minus uh, 2.0 dot dot 2.0 and this could be, actually we can actually set up, um, this was step, let's do, maybe we want the staircases to be 1.5 meters wide and then I can just multiply this with negative 1. The reason why I'm doing it this way is because we're going to do it for the other side as well. Uh, so this could be the threshold 0 to minus 1, 5 could be for y. Now it's in the right place, so it's going to start from right and go to the left. And for z, uh, we can make it, um, we can actually make it go down, we can also make it go up. So it depends on the step size. So we could also do copy this 0 uh, domain. And the height value, we already set it to be uh, 0.15, so we could bring it here. And this would be the z value. So you can see the steps are aligning pretty nicely. Um, if we want to make these steps overlap, um, we can also increase this thickness, like not 1.5, but maybe times 2. So you can also do it as quick multiplication. This, is, this I didn't have with the example file. But we can bring in the similar construction here and um, actually now the steps are going up a bit more. We need it to go from 0 to minus, so we also need to multiply this value with negative 2. So if I multiply with negative 2, it's going to go down and that will be uh, the steps. So we can make it like this or we can just make it minus 1. Um, pretty much the same, if you ask me. Um, the next phase is to do the other side. So because we had the split here, so I'm going to just work with the other uh, points. So we could do uh, copy this portion, bring it down, get the B points. Now we needed this to actually follow a different uh, type of translation. So one quick fix to do this would be to reverse the list uh, of these B, B points so that the first point doesn't move but the last point moves most, right? So that will actually work with the same list. So you can see the points are aligning pretty nicely with the same translation. And these points are pretty much going to take the similar construction here. So when I put the XY plane, and rather than putting um, if you go to the y, it goes from 0 to 1 point, negative 1.5. For this one, the y has to be uh, positive. So I place 1.5 and replace the y. So that will set uh, the steps to be correct. And we actually get got the steps to work fine. Uh, but we have a sim simple problem and that is actually um, the landing. So where they meet, we need uh, we need a landing here. So that landing um, needs to be modified from the last uh, point here on the first list. So if you go here, we need to modify this point. So we need to actually take it out. So we have the moved points here. One way of doing it could be we filter the last point. So if you go to shift list, you want to filter the last point, we can plug in minus one. So minus one will get rid of the last item and wrapping could be set to set to false so that we actually get rid of that item. So we had a total of 11 points after the shift we have 10. So if I plug this in, that step is gone, but I actually need it as well. So uh, we can actually do another reverse list here and list item. By default, list item will grab the first item of the reverse list, which is this last point and we can uh, set another box there so let's start working on that box and this box this time let's look at its parameters so its depth needs to be uh, not from 0 0.0 to 0 0.3 it has to be actually the full uh, length so it has to be 0 to 1.5 so x is going to be 0 to 1.5 and y needs to go from 1.5 to negative 1.5.
right? So we need a new domain for that y, and this will be uh, this will actually have 1.5 there and negative 1.5 for the other side. So we define a new domain, and this goes to y, and that will set my landing. And let's see if this is working. So all these geometries are here. So we can cluster them actually. So the staircase should work fine. But uh, one issue you might have is if you, let's say, want to change the height and then change the, the step size, then these actually should correspond a little bit because um, you can either go by defining the height through a multiplication of the, um, of the height of the steps. Uh, for instance, if I increase this, you can see that sometimes there might be some gap left because I'm dividing the length. So to fix this, you can actually multiply the, um, the height of the step with some value. So let's say 20, we need 20 steps. So whatever the resulting value is, you can actually plug it into Z. And you can just go about changing the step size, as step height. Um, now here, let's see, we have 0.4. Uh, this is actually should work, but let's say 0.15. That's fine. Let's increase this. I think one of the calculation sometimes is missing, like this one, when we do 23, 3.14, let's see, when we divide it, it grabs uh, 23 points, but not. So the length threshold isn't actually giving me kind of a satisfactory result. Um, rather than dividing it into points, uh, we may actually want to um, maybe construct them with an array. Um, but I already built it like this, so maybe we can stick to the way it's built right now. So you can see when I increase the number count, um, the staircase would actually elongate itself and it will adjust nicely, right? So uh, this is missing one step though. Let's see if I can fix it. So it doesn't seem to work when the uh, numbers, are, um, numbers are even or odd. I think the length division uh, seems to fail. So let's try to actually fix that. So rather than doing divide length, we actually have uh, the full height here. So maybe we can, um, we need to reach 2.4, but we can actually pl plug in a series here. So let's try doing that. So we start from uh, the interval is 0 0.15 and we need 16 of those. So these will be the heights and uh, but it's going to miss the final one which is 2.4 so i can actually make an addition to that let's do like this so we have 2.4 and we need to divide so 16 divided by 2 let's actually take out the split we have the points the z location for the points could be these values so they already, we don't need to define the line. So we have the points now. And we can divide the length by two and plug these points in. So let's see if that would work. That actually works a lot better so we can get rid of the uh, curve length. So if I increase the number count, this should actually work seamlessly and it does. So I can change the step height and I can change the number of steps as well so that the staircase is calculated. Um, now, now that we have done it, there are multiple ways of copying this vertically. Uh, you can actually, you might have uh, planes for the floor slabs. Um, like you can actually uh, do this operation a bunch of times, or you can grab the geometries at the end and make a vertical array. So we can also do it this way. So if you, for instance, plug these in, and we can do move. We want to move in the Z direction. And this will basically be multiplied um, with the total height. So here we have 4.68. So here we have 27. So if I get the multiplication of the step height and the number of steps, 4.68, 4.68, so I bring this in, 
here. So this is going to be an interval and I do series. So we get this as the step size and you can write in here how many floors you want and we can move all of these uh, up. So let's see, we have 14, 13. Um, here you can actually do a little bit of, um, let's see, if I flatten this list out and if I, six vectors, so we could do, if I do a graph here and voila, that should give me the stairs. I actually don't have one here because you can imagine maybe putting it adjacent to a slab. So it's running only in one direction, but this could control how many floors we have. And let me actually go back here, turn off the points. So initially we can control the step height. So you can see all of them are actually changing the height. This can control the number of steps and it's adjusting pretty nicely. And we can also customize some of the other topological properties. For instance, we can change its uh, step size. So we can change its length. Here actually it's, um, let's see, when I increase this, this is probably not um, taken into consideration for the X displacement. But let's see, if I make it 0 0.3, There's probably something disconnected, but let's try to find it out. So the initial location for the points, um, this one, yeah, these two have to be identical, I think. So these two and this guy has to be coming from the same parameter. Yeah, now you can see it works fine when we change the step length. And here we can also change the width, which is here 1.5. We can also make it thinner or larger and that um, landing also adjusts. So once you have it done, you can just go and bake. And that's our parametric staircase. So we can control its height its uh, step size, number of floors, how many times you want it to be replicated, and uh, we can control some of its uh, topological properties as well. So um, I hope you like this uh, tutorial. Um, again, it was a parametric staircase, so I wanted to walk, walk through about some of the basics of how to build it. Um, of course, there could be other types of geometries uh, that could be regarded as staircases, maybe a rounded uh, landing, um, it could also be cool to build the, um, the railings parametrically too, but that's a bit more work on getting the points right. So um, if you like the content, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel. I upload content like this every week. And um, uh, next week, I'm also going to have some announcements. So if you want to get more information about uh, learning Grasshopper, stay tuned to the channel. And um, if you have any questions, you can leave comments below and I'll see you guys uh, in another video and thanks for watching.